The White Lady is a rock art painting located within Namibia's highest mountain of Brandberg on the Corihas Hentis Bay Road. The White Lady painting, known as Weibe Dame in German, was rediscovered in 1918 by a German explorer and photographer Reinhard Mark while surveying the Brandberg Mountain. Today, Brandberg Mountain is one of Namibia's national heritage sites. On the 29th of June 2018, the Minister of Education, Art and Culture, Honorable Katrina Hansa Himara, officially inaugurated the Brandberg National Heritage Site Reception. Uh, as we all know by now, we are gathered here for the unveiling of the common commemorative plaque to mark the centenary celebrations of the rediscovery of the world famous white lady of the Grand Bear, rediscovered on the 4th of January 1980. And I must say, I like the way you put it that it has been rediscovered. Because nobody can come where people have been loving for centuries and before and claim to have discovered something. Nobody has ever discovered something in Namibia because Namibians were living way before in Namibia and whatever whatever is found in Namibia is already known and has been already seen by the native Namibians. A Brand Berg mountain is Namibia's highest mountain of its Königstein attaining 2,573 meters above sea level as its highest peak. And from the landscape perspective, Brandberg functions on two levels, and that was also one being a complex landmark on its own, and two being the most dominant rock art area in Namibia with about 50,000 paintings and engravings found at more than 1,000 sites, making it one of the prominent sites in Africa making it one of the prominent sites in Africa. So we are counting among, amongst the prominent sites in Africa. So the rock art tradition has been attributed to the hunter-gatherer hunter rock art tradition, the descendants of the present-day Saan people of Southern Africa. Of course, I know that part is also under dispute, and that's why I was calling upon the, the, the young generations to study and to do more research. The intensified multidisciplinary research programs into the Brandberg Mountain led to a broader contextual understanding of the mountain's geological, ecological, historical, and archaeological heritage. So in order to recognize and protect the significance, that the significance of the mountain was designated a national <coughs> monument on the 15th June 1951. The Brandberg area is a space covering 450 square kilometer that incorporates the entire Brandberg Massif. In addition to its significant ecology and geomorphology, its archaeological significance lies in the wealth of rock art that includes the world famous White Lady. And I'm reading there the big White Lady, Black Lady. I'm still curious to find out. <laughs> now the main reasons for preservation of the brand bear is fivefold. And that is the beauty of the entire brand bear landscape in Namibia, the interesting and unique geomorphological formation, its rich ecological heritage, which includes varieties of rare and remarkable plant species, a variety of animal life due to the presence of enormous water resources in the mountain and the host of rock paintings including the world famous white lady rock painting as well as a number of archaeological sites. Although this painting was only discovered a hundred years ago, rediscovered hundred years ago together with many other artworks on this mountain the White Lady's painting's existence can be traced back from 6,000 years ago. Now more than ever, it is our national responsibility to research, manage, and intensify our efforts 
in the protection and conservation of our heritage. And that has been also said by our doctor when she did her presentations. It is against this background, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to recognize that the Brand Perry Mountain is not only important to Namibia, but it is also important to the entire globe. The world has been closely observing our actions and monitoring our different interventions at this mountain. Mostly so since the listing of the Brandberg National Monument on the tentative listing for World Heritage nominations. This was evidence in the interest of the international organizations like the Africa World Heritage Fund that held a regional workshop here two years ago on the preparations of disaster risk management plans for the World Heritage Properties. And I was fortunate that I was there. I know also that this workshop has resulted in the development of a disaster risk management plan for the Brandberg National Monument that has since been approved and is currently being implemented. And for that, we must give at least a homage. We must also appreciate the Secretariat of the National Heritage Council for the work they have been tirelessly doing around here. Another <laughs> And therefore, I would say that now that you have acquired the knowledge, replicate the development of disaster risk management plans around the country and also to the other sides. Ladies and gentlemen, the Committee for the Implementation of the World Heritage Convention in Namibia intends to nominate the Grand Perth National Monument as a mixed property as a result of both its natural and cultural attributes of outstanding universal value. So the site has the potential to meet seven of the ten criteria set out in the operational guidelines for the implementation of the World Heritage Convention. The cultural values of the site that meets the criteria includes, includes civilization, typical landscape, and threatened human cultures, as well as key living traditions. On the other hand, the natural values of the site that meets the criteria include the aesthetic importance, the ecosystem, and biodiversity. As we manage, ladies and gentlemen, the country's national heritage resources, we should bear in mind that cultural heritage epitomizes our identity, who we are, where we are coming from, and of course where we are heading. We should ensure that society finds our cultural heritage resources valuable for their use in different sustainable ways. We should therefore ensure that the links that exist between intangible cultural heritage and tangible cultural heritage are strengthened for the benefit of our people. I'm very honored to stand here today and to welcome you here today. I cannot say that I am the representative of the Namibian people, but I think today we should remember that we are here because of all the Namibian people. It is a, their hard-earned money and effort that has been put in to this project. And for that we really have to thank each one of the 2.6 million people that live in this country. So really I'm honored to stand here as a servant. So this project consists of three main components. We have here the gate office which was an existing building, but which has been largely renovated and brought up to the standards of 21st century building quality. So we have a building here now that the NHC staff can feel comfortable to work in. Um, they have all the facilities that they need and they are completely independent. They have completely their own power, their own water supply, their own sewage system. And that is something that gives them a very stable base to work from. And as also this has become a facility now that one can really be proud of to present to the tourists who come to this country. 
So they already, I think, you can give a big tick um, to this project. The second component is the staff accommodation, which is down in the valley, as I'm sure most of, most of you know. Um, that building um, has been designed specifically to accommodate um, the staff who are working um, in, this, in this area and to basically provide, again, a safe, healthy, comfortable environment to um, live in while they are working here away from their families. Um, the third component, which actually came along in the middle of the project, was the upgrading of the community borehole, the existing borehole, which had somehow become defunct. I can't remember all the details. But a good deal of effort was put there to drill a new borehole. What is notable about this project is that it is something that has benefited our government, and that is important because our government is the one that looks after us. So we have now something that helps the government to work better and more efficiently. Secondly, it has benefited the local community. What has happened with this project, and this was a mandate that was given right in the very beginning, was that the local population should be used in the construction phase of the project. During the inauguration and handover ceremony for staff accommodation at the site, the chairperson of National Heritage Council, Dr. Bennett Kangumu, called upon residents countrywide to help the council in identifying places, sites and objects to be considered for national heritage status. However, he also articulated that most of the national heritage sites requires urgent financial assistance for proper maintenance. Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, the National Heritage Council inherited an imbalanced list of declared national heritage sites in terms of typologies and regional distribution, such that to date three regions, that is Oshana, Kavango West, and Zambezi regions, are yet to have a single declared national heritage site. Council is working tirelessly to redress the situation and we call upon residents countrywide to approach the Secretariat of Council with suggestions of places, sites, and objects that must be considered for national heritage status. Presently, Dridon Farte Fossil Reef in Reopoth Rural Constituency and Shark Island in the town of Ludris are nearing declaration. A short while ago, we witnessed you, Honorable Minister officially inaugurate and hand over staff houses here at Brandbeck National Heritage Site. The construction of our national heritage sites, such as the Heroes Acre and the Nana Shrine, that were handed over to the National Heritage Council to manage, did not come with an appropriate level of maintenance budget for their restoration, which leads to rapid deterioration, especially from natural causes. With that, Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to bid everyone a warm welcome to this event, especially all our stakeholders for making this event possible. Let, me, let us take pride in our heritage and the fundamental role it plays in giving us an identity and enriching our livelihoods. Let us join forces to preserve tomorrow, today. I thank you. Rock art specialist Dr. Alma Nankela explains that rock art is found in most continents of the world except for Antarctica, with Africa topping the list. Rock art heritage is a global phenomenon that exists throughout human history and it's found on every continent with an exception of Antarctica. However, in terms of density and distribution, Africa has the largest concentration of rock art sites in the world. And today, our database stands at more than 70,000 known rock art sites with over 3 million feet. The largest um, concentration is actually found in Southern Africa with over 50,000 sites with over 2 million figures. And in general, the painting sites, for example, the white lady, are predominates over the pyramid sites, like the Trey um, Fontaine um, old pyramid site. Now, Namibian rock art heritage is one of the richest in Southern Africa with over 65,000 figures found at more than 12,000 sites. 
And the highest concentration, as you know, is found in the Brownback Mountain with over 50,000, and Stoifofontein, Irongo, and the Spitzkopen Mountain. However, in Namibia, of the 12,000 registered rock outside in Namibia, we only have eight to date that has been proclaimed as Namibia's national heritage uh, before Namibia gained independence, which means that there have never been any proclaimed rock art site in Namibia after independence. And there are so many uh, challenges that attribute to that. Now, of the eight declared sites, we only have one that has been inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is 2014, and one on the UNESCO tentative list 2002, and that is the Brandenburg. So, Namibia having recognized the universality of the 1972 Convention toward the protection of the heritage site, we have an absolute massive responsibility toward this first art heritage, in ensuring that it's thoroughly researched, managed, and then protected. We are the
minister, our honorable minister, Katrina Hansi Marwa. We know that you have had a very extreme, very hugely busy time of late. We've been watching uh, the television, we've been watching or reading rather the newspapers. We've been seeing you being busy throughout the last, I don't know, number of weeks. And I don't doubt the fact that you should be not feeling okay today. But you are doing this for the love of your people and for dexterity and commitment that only people of your generation still has and needs to get hands for. Minister <laughs> Together with the minister is the deputy permanent secretary, the person with whom I had lots of times meetings about getting money, especially for the um, staff houses, complex crises and whatnot. They are here. These people played a very important role in us celebrating today, not just the centenary, but also decent accommodation for our staff members. I would also like to thank the Ministry of Environment and Tourism. Shortly after my uh, word of gratitude, you will remain here to eat, to drink, and to dance. Because there is no celebration where people would not be dancing. It's only celebration and a party when people celebrate. I tried the traditional Beer, but I failed because I never tried it. So I've just prayed over the normal ginger beer that we get in the shops. So if you finish drinking that, pretend that you are, you know, in the mood. We thank equally the traditional authority from Tisip, the owners of Mountain, for the fat cake ingredients and the fat cake stuff that they have given us so that people can eat fat cake today because we decided let's go close to tradition and not the sly and bizarre fat cooks are high comes the the national elite council under the leadership of dr gangumu thank you for your time for your time, your passion, that no money really can pay. You have put in so much, tremendously, to make today a reality. We thank you for preserving National Heritage Council, the heritage of the Namibian nation, with such immeasurable, unfathomable, indefatigable, <laughs> Patience and passion. The cultural groups, the school groups, thank you so much. You have added tremendously to the celebrations and the mood of this um, of today. So therefore, your presence is highly appreciated, and your contributions are also highly appreciated. I am inviting everyone after this formal program is over, we are going to dance. That's why that system is just waiting for you.